Well, we just got a huge leak about AMD's next generation GPUs. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so I have talked about UDNA or RDNA 5 in the past, whatever you want to call it, and look, if all this information that's coming out turns out to be true, I'll tell you this much, it is going to be an incredibly powerful series of GPUs. In fact, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting one, and I would consider switching to AMD once again if these hold true, but that is the question. Do these hold true? Now, this information comes from the YouTube channel Moore's Law is Dead, and if we take a look here, he's basically released all of the specs for the RX 10 series, or whatever you want to call it. Of course, the naming probably hasn't been finalized yet, as we are going to be a little bit of a ways away from the release of these things, which, by the way, we will get into. But in any case, let's start off with this from the bottom and go to the top. So we have the 10, oh Jesus, okay. I, I, I'll tell you this much right now, the naming will not be this. <laughs> it's not gonna be the 160 XT, it would be the 1060 XT. They're clearly kind of pointing towards that. They've already brought out the 90, 70 XT, etc. So yeah, they're clearly copying Nvidia's naming scheme. They would go to the 1060 XT anyway. This is apparently gonna have 44 compute units, a TBP target of 210 watts, 16 megabytes of L2 cache, 128 bit bus, which is pretty low, I would say, but it is gonna be using GDDR7, 12 gigabytes of it apparently, and running at 36 gigabits per second, that's an awfully fast memory chip for such an entry level GPU, but okay, and apparently that's gonna give you 576 gigabytes per second, which is a pretty decent amount. And apparently the you know rough performance of this versus an RTX 480 is apparently gonna be about 64% as fast. That's a strange thing to compare it to, but if we actually look to the right, he does have equivalent performance, 5060 Ti slash 5070. And then the next one up, the 1070 GRE is apparently gonna be around a 9070 or 4080 Super. And then the 1070 XT is gonna be around a 5080 or 4090. And then the flagship 10, 90 XT is apparently going to have the performance of an RTX 6090, which of course is going to be some napkin math as a 6090 doesn't even exist yet. And if we take a look at the rest of the specs, the compute units, it goes from 44 to 48 to 64 to 154. So there's a little bit of an increase in the amount of cores per GPU. And then suddenly it massively increases with the flagship GPU. I'm assuming this is incomplete information. There would likely be cut down versions of that flagship card, but at this point in time, we don't know for sure. And I will tell you, to be honest with you, the 1060 XT to the 1070 XT, could the core count be correct in the, the power targets? Yeah, sure, it definitely could. Same with the L2 cache. The memory bus, it could be what he's showing here. They could be trying to kind of save some money by giving you a lower bus width, or maybe they're using some sort of multi-chip module design that is gonna restrict, you know, only 64 cores to 192-bit bus. They're not gonna do 256-bit bus, which they normally would. What I'm saying is the bus sizes aren't as big as I would expect according to this information from Moore's Law is dead. And I will tell you, yeah, a lot of this does look like it definitely could come into fruition, but I do have a few things that just don't make sense to me whatsoever. First of all, 36 gigabits per second GDDR7 on everything seems a bit speedy for some of those more budget cards. I don't think they would do that, but they certainly could if they're trying to get away with smaller bus sizes. And then the 1090 XT that's being you know, discussed here potentially. I, I just don't believe this one at all. Uh, the reason why I say that is because, first of all, it's got a ton of compute units, which is totally fine. 154 compute units could totally be done. But then you look at the TBP target in 380 watts, and look, if you do the math, this is basically not possible if they wanna run it at high clock speeds. At lower clock speeds, yes, this definitely could be done. But then at that point, why are you building such an expensive, massive GPU? So I don't think the 1090 XT specs here 
are correct. In a bandwidth of nearly two terabytes per second, again, I feel like 36 gigabit per second G7 is just kind of a waste of money for AMD for these cards. They're gonna be trying to compete with Nvidia on pricing. I don't see them going for that high speed. So there's a couple problems I have with this. I have my own specs that I've thrown together for the RX 10 series. I think that the 1090 XT is gonna be 144 compute units running at around three gigahertz and give you 24 gigabytes of memory, not 36. I feel like that's just totally unnecessary. It would be a huge cost to the consumer for no reason. So 24 should be plenty fine running at 32 gigabits per second. Same 384 bit bus that's being reported here. I think that's correct. Uh, however, I do believe you'll get around 1500 gigabytes per second, not over 1700. Again, I just don't think there's a reason to. And the TDP, now I'm, I'm reporting TDP, he's saying TBP, so there's gonna be a bit of a difference there. But look, I, I think you are gonna see rough power draw around 450 watts, potentially upwards of 500 watts plus on a card like this. Like realistically, it would probably have to be 550 watts if they make this thing. Maybe they can get away with 500 watts or just under, simply because if you look at the process node that they're likely to be producing this on, getting under 500 watts will be difficult at higher clock speeds. So with that being the case, I just don't see the specs for the 1090 XT that are being reported by Morzaz Dead being realistic. It, I'm not saying it couldn't happen, it certainly could. I just think it's a little bit optimistic on the performance versus the power characteristics that are being reported here. So I believe you're gonna see closer to 144, not 154, and I think the power will be a lot higher, assuming it doesn't get canceled. I also believe the 1080 XT will exist and will be cut down from the 1090 XT and will be at roughly 104 compute units, you know, bridging the gap between those lower end and mid tier cards versus this super high end card. And I also believe that the 1070 XT will have a few more compute units, but at the end of the day, we are a little bit of a ways out and things can certainly change. I could be wrong. Wrong. he could be wrong but I do believe when you take a look at the specs that I've given you as well as his there is definitely some similarities here and there's something we're starting to get closer and closer to the final you know specifications for the RX 10 series I think it is going to be probably somewhere in the middle between the two different options you're being faced with here and in terms of performance yeah I do think you will see the 1090 XT possibly competing with an RTX 6090 what I will tell you is that in terms of performance versus an RX 9070 XT, I'm expecting it to be nearly three times faster. In terms of real world performance, probably closer to 2.3 times the performance that would put it ahead of the 82% more performance you get out of the 5090. So in fact, it would be significantly faster than the RTX 5090, assuming they go through with whether it's 154 or 144 SMs. But look, it's AMD that we're talking about, fellas, so they could cancel it and make it smaller, and that wouldn't surprise me. Now, to be honest, even if they did that, let's say that the 1080 XT is the highest end GPU you get, that still would put you at roughly RTX 5090 performance. So what I'm telling you is, look, it seems like we're getting very close to the final specifications of these cards as every month that goes by, the specifications narrow in closer and closer. And what we're looking at as the image becomes clearer is a GPU series that's likely to be a very significant uplift over our current GPU options from AMD, likely massively also increasing the ray tracing as well as AI upscaling performance and compatibility, delivering to you a GPU series that'll be very, very competitive with what NVIDIA has to offer. Will it beat the 6090 or will it be competing with the 6080? Only time will tell as we don't know what will and won't be canceled. But again, it's looking like it's gonna be very, very fast. And in terms of release date, I am expecting quarter one of 2027. So if you're looking forward to possibly getting RTX 5090 performance for a far, far lower price, Definitely keep your eyes out as these GPUs start to have more and more rumors hitting the internet. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RX 10 series really will compete with the RTX 6090 and massively eclipse the RTX 5090? Or will AMD chicken out once again and reduce the size of the GPU so that they have less risk involved? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.